<clears throat> hey folks, it's Carrie from Pretty Neat. Thanks for joining me. If you're new here to my channel, welcome. I share videos here every week about organizing and decluttering and just making your space the best it can be. So I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and stick around. Today, I want to share my thoughts about a new documentary that just was released on Netflix on January 1st. It's called Less Is Now, and it's a movie made by these two guys who call themselves The Minimalists. Now, they have been around for quite a while. It's been about 10 years that they have been writing and talking about minimalism on their podcast, on their blog, in their books. And I have followed them for many years and I get a lot of value out of their content. In 2016, The Minimalists came out with a movie that was called Minimalism. And I thought that movie was excellent. It really uh, did a good job explaining the minimalist movement and the basic principles of minimalism. I thought that the 2016 movie Minimalism was really well made. It was very cinematic. The director was Matt Diavella and he directed their newest documentary as well. And he himself has an excellent YouTube channel and it's just his name. I'll link to him down below, but he is just such a good filmmaker. His work is visually beautiful and even his YouTube videos are like watching little mini movies. He shares some great content about habit formation and about living more minimally. And he does a lot of month long experiments like taking cold showers every day. This is not really a commercial for Matt Diavella. I'm just a fan. And so when I heard that he had a new movie coming out with The Minimalists, I was really excited to check it out. One thing that makes the new documentary a little different from their first one is that it really delves into the story of the minimalists. So these two guys, Joshua and Ryan, their story is essentially their brand and their main message. They both came from a poor background and they both had parents who struggled with substance abuse and they basically just had difficult upbringings and they kind of channeled that into making a success of themselves in the corporate world. And they made it their mission to achieve those measures of success that are shown to us in advertising and in movies and on TV. And they both were able to achieve it. What they found in doing that was that it really was not fulfilling and that it didn't make them happy and they both came to those conclusions and decided to change their lives. If you also follow The Minimalists, you have heard their story many times. It's their jumping off point to talk about the benefits. They can talk about personally how it's impacted them, and that is really powerful to hear about. I know that their story was presented in their first movie back in 2016, now in this newest documentary, they do share more details about their stories and about their individual journeys to minimalism, but they also flesh it out through these reenactments. It felt a little bit hokey to me to have them like sitting in an office setting, which it was obviously not really the office they were working in and kind of going through the motions, acting, through their discontent of being an office worker. The other thing that I thought was a, a little bit strange was that they tell their story in the documentary on a stage with like this brick wall behind them, like this very industrial setting. It looks like it was shot in an old warehouse. And they each take turns talking to the camera and telling their story in a very dramatic way. It almost felt like you were watching a spoken word poetry reading at times. It's one thing for a person to sit and talk to the camera in a more intimate setting and tell their story and you really feel like they're talking to you. But when a person is standing on a stage with, you know, movie lighting and this 
intentional backdrop behind them, it feels like a performance. And actually at the end of the movie, when the credits roll, it actually says that it was written and performed by Josh and Ryan. I don't know what to think about this. It's, I think, just a personal preference as to how you like to receive information. Again, to me, it felt like it was putting the audience a little bit more at a distance because it was like a theater production and not just the two of them telling their story. But other people might really enjoy that. The documentary is also interspersed with experts talking about issues related to consumerism and economics. And those, for the most part, I think are really successful. They're very interesting to hear from and they add some broader context to the story of Josh and Ryan. One of the experts that's included is Dave Ramsey. He is a very well-known financial expert. He wrote the book, The Total Money Makeover. I read Dave Ramsey's book. I think that it has great information. Personally, I don't really like Dave Ramsey's personality. I feel like he comes off kind of obnoxious in the book and also in this documentary. So his inclusion, while he's an expert, certainly, and he's a big name to have in this documentary, I don't particularly like listening to him talk. In addition to hearing from experts in this documentary, we also get commentary from some regular people who it appears they were filmed uh, through like Zoom or through their computer screen. Most of them, it's just a very brief snippet from each person or from each couple where they just say some benefit that minimalism has had in their life. And there's a bunch of those interspersed throughout the movie. I guess the point of that was to show that what Josh and Ryan have created is this large following and it's become somewhat of a movement. And the point of this was to hear from some of those members of the movement and to show that a lot of average people have found benefits. Honestly, the way they were shot, it just felt a little bit cheap and it didn't really add a lot of additional information for me. Because I am such a fan of Josh and Ryan's and I really enjoyed their first documentary, I couldn't help but view this in relation to their previous movie and to make some comparisons. And honestly, I felt like this newest film fell a little bit short of the original one that they had made. It's very short, it's about 50 minutes. It just felt a little bit slight to me. Um, again, the inclusion of the everyday people and the way those were filmed, that seemed to cheapen it a little bit for me in terms of the visual presentation. I really didn't feel like it added anything new to the conversation. Um, I think that the newest film retreads most of the same content and information as the first movie, but does it in a way that isn't as quite as compelling. I thought that the first film had a really broad range of people highlighted, both experts and other people in the minimalist movement. I thought that that did a good job of showing that the principles of minimalism can be adopted by anyone in pretty much any walk of life. The people who were interviewed and featured in the first film were a broad range, people who were single, married, living in the suburbs, living in the city, living in a tiny house. So I thought that the their initial movie back in 2016 really showed that well. And I just didn't think that the newest movie said anything new about that. So I guess the bottom line in terms of reviewing this newest film from The Minimalist is that I would say if you've never heard of The Minimalists, if you're new to them, it's a good introduction to them and to their story. If you have heard of them and if you're already familiar with them or if you've already seen the first movie that they made back in 2016, 
this is not a must see. I feel like it rehashes a lot of the same content and it's very heavy on their own story. And if you've already heard their story, I don't feel that you really need to see them act it out or to speak it in front of a brick wall. At the start of this film, there is some information that's brought up, some statistics that are presented, and there's some discussion of how our shopping habits have shifted more to the online space. And they talk a little bit about how we can literally order and have an item shipped to us sometimes within 24 hours now. And I think that is an important piece of context, but I would have really liked to have heard more about that from them and maybe heard a little bit more about how to deal with that. I feel like those statistics were presented at the front end, but that point wasn't really given more attention in terms of how we can push back against it. There were a couple really great points that I made note of as I was watching this film. And one of them was when Josh was telling his own story and about his own issues with accumulating so much stuff. He described himself as a well-organized hoarder. And I just thought that was such a great phrase and something that I think a lot of people can relate to. There are a lot of us who have accumulated enough stuff to really be considered a hoarder in some sense, even though it's all very clean and well-organized. Another point that I really liked that was brought up by one of the experts in the film was that we shouldn't be judging having too much stuff by whether or not we are running out of space. And he made the point that you could have a very minimal amount of things in your home, but if they're not useful to you, they're still not useful. So the point that we should be using to judge whether our things are useful or not is actually, are we using them and not do we have room for them? In the wrap up of the movie, there was a quote that I thought was really powerful. It was, that we are binging on all of the wrong things and we're dying for the things that really matter. It really takes on almost like a spiritual journey for people. I think that a lot of folks start doing this for very practical reasons. They've run out of space in their homes or their space is really disorganized and it's causing them stress. And they start for those practical reasons, but as they start getting rid of things, they really find much deeper benefits. And this has certainly been the case for me, that living a more minimal life in terms of my physical belongings has allowed me so much more space for the really important things like having more time to spend with loved ones or having more energy to devote to my work or to creative projects. And it's why I myself try to preach the message of minimalism here on my channel, because I think the benefits really can be deep and impactful. At the end of the movie as well, they present this one activity that they advise you to do. And it's something that the minimalists have talked about for many years. The basic premise is that you pair up with someone and you both agree that for the next 30 days, you're going to get rid of things. And on day one of the month, you're gonna get rid of one item. And on day two of the month, you're gonna get rid of two items and so on. And the idea is that you're competing with this other person, a friend or a family member, and you try to see who gets the furthest in the month. While I'm all for giving yourself a challenge or providing some structure to your decluttering, I have always found this particular challenge that Josh and Ryan have come up with to be very unrealistic for the average person. Um, it seems to me that for the first week or so, it will be relatively easy for anyone to do but once you get to like day 14, 15, 16 and up, and you need to find that many things in your home to get rid of, you're just gonna give up. You're gonna need to spend so much time each day trying to declutter that many things that I think it sets people up 
to fail. I came up with my own version of a decluttering challenge. I call it 5530 and it still works within the month time frame. but I advise people to spend five minutes a day to look around your house, find five items that you can get rid of and repeat that process for 30 days. I have found that this is pretty realistic for most people and also most of us have so much stuff in our homes. Finding those five things a day isn't that hard and it doesn't take that much time. And so I think if you're going to embark on a decluttering challenge, maybe trying just a few items each day rather than what they advise, which is to do additional items as the month goes on, I think you might have better success. So my take home point about the minimalists new documentary, Less Is Now, it's good. I don't think it's as good as their 2016 documentary, Minimalism. And if you are new to them, maybe just skip this one and watch the first one or if you've already seen their first movie, maybe rewatch that. I think it covers the same territory and I don't think that the new one really is a must see. But I'm interested to know what you think. Have you tuned in to The Minimalist's new documentary on Netflix this week? If so, I would love to hear what you have to say. Comment down below and let me know. I've also reviewed The Home Edit. They have a show on Netflix that has been very popular this year. And if you wanna hear my thoughts on that, I'll link to that down below as well. So far, it has been my most viewed and most commented on video to date. And there's a lot of really good, insightful, and funny comments on my review. So I'll link it down below if you wanna check that out. So I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on this new documentary, Less Is Now. If you did, please leave me a like on the video. It really helps my channel and it helps other people to get to see my content. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I share videos here every week about organizing and decluttering your home and just making your space the best it can be. Talk to you soon.